In early 1974, Boston was thrown into turmoil by Judge W. Arthur Garrity as he ruled Boston public schools were unconstitutionally segregated. In order to desegregate Boston public schools, he devised a busing plan to eliminate the unconstitutional problem the schools were facing. Garrity was faced with much opposition, but felt his ruling was bolstered by the Brown v. Board of Education trial, which had earlier found segregated schools were unconstitutional as they caused psychological harm for the mi and minority children. Garrity's plan had a flaw, as Brown v. Board of Education was a case that primarily dealt with de jure segregation. Yet problems arose, even though Boston was a city made up of de facto segregation. Boston, Massachusetts. I did. I had one child in the school system at the beginning. They went to public school for the kindergarten, and then they were went to Catholic school. Kim was six years old when she went to parochial school. She was five years old when the busing first started. Were we nervous about the kids coming to school? Yeah, from Roxbury. Well, yeah. yeah that was the biggest topic. Yes. Everything else was like, you know, never mind the weather, uh, how's the baseball going. There's always what's going on in school, you know, for, for most years. Jeez, it was crazy. I felt every child should go to their own neighborhood school and not be bused. if they lived in our neighborhood. I went to English High um, Annex for my first year in high school, and that was uh, in Roxbury on the Jamaica Plain Line. It was all black. But I did that on my own choice, because they had a better education there than Southie High. They were all against it. None of them wanted their children bust anywhere outside of Dorchester. Well, just them not refusing to send them for the first couple of weeks. Back then we had truant officers and they would go to the house of any child that didn't show up in school after a couple of days. They would go to the parent's house and they would tell, demand that the child be brought to school. Garrity's controversial ruling should have dissolved the tensions between black and white and brought equality to the Boston education system. Yet his ruling was flawed, as it wasn't suited to fix de facto segregation. De facto, in Latin, means in reality. Depicts segregation formed by natural tendencies of ethnic enclaves settling in the same area as their own ethnicity. De jure, in Latin, means according to the law, and it depicts segregation defined by the law such as white only and colored only. You could do a, um, well, now they call it a chins, where, you know, uh, our 51A child abuse for not sending them to school. You know, the parents would be held accountable. No, they ended up sending them to school eventually. Mm. They, got, they were bust. And yeah, none of the kids like homeschooled. Mm -hmm. No. Not when they were younger no. in school. Not when them, like Kim would say, oh, I met um, Naomi or somebody. No, she never said anything about that. We went to City Hall Plaza a few times. We went over to Southie a few times, and it was just, it was bedlam. The police were holding us at bay and telling us to disperse. And, and if you didn't... We were holding up signs. People were being pushed and arrested. And they were getting hit. Literally, yeah, like, you know, And then over bloody. in South Boston, the school buses were being, you know, rocks were thrown at them. The kids were 
getting hit with rocks going into the school. It was, it was a mess. When Judge Garrity announced the forced busing to create integrated schools, hysteria broke out throughout Boston, as everyone feared for the safety of their children. Horrific stereotypes between the two races caused this hysteria and hatred to rise from a historical place known for its tolerance and equality. Private schools soared as their attendance went through the roof, as they weren't affected by the busing. Homeschooling became the great alternative for the families who couldn't pay for private schools. Finally, the great percent of Boston rioted against the forced busing as they felt it was an injustice to them and their children. Only 100 of the 1,300 students to arrive to the school of the first day, and the intolerance of their parents inhibited anyone from going to school, whether at their own high school or at one predominantly black. Stop busing. Stop forced busing. Yeah, stop forced busing. Uh, yeah. And Garrity's an asshole and all that. That's right. I, I forgot all about his name, Judge mm -hmm. Garrity. Yeah, it was. Oh yeah, they, they, they didn't um, pull back hitting protesters if they, you know, wouldn't disperse when they said to. And they wanted you to disperse like that. Even mm -hmm. if you walked away slow, they came right behind you. They were in the helmets, like motorcycle helmets and everything, yes. black gloves. They, in, they, they almost like the freaking Gestapo. They were whacking everybody. I mean, I seen it. Yeah. But don't give me my camera. The whole my tooth. The students being bused to schools to Dorchester were predominantly African-American and had to deal with riots around them and slurs being thrown at them every single day. The majority of the residents of Dorchester were white Irish immigrants, and though they have seemed fine with diversity over history, considering Boston had been a place to go if you were a slave on the run, the people suddenly became opposed to the idea of integration. Very few people finished the year in a public school, many opted for Catholic school, as did Paula Wisniewski, a resident of Dorchester at the time. I felt bad for the child mm. that got stabbed. You know, like I said, forced busing wasn't going to work. Didn't mm. improve the education as far as I can see. What was like the uh, city's like, uh, like reaction to that? Oh, the media blew it way up out of proportion. Mm. The media just, that, that was all you heard on the news was the busing and the instances that were going on about the kids being hurt and, you know, buses being um, damaged and vandalized and it was, yeah. I mean, you know, they even had the politicians, some Celtics in against the politicians in Roxbury. They were going at it, you know. Nobody wanted it. No. Yeah, Except for some of the black felt their children would be better off mm. in a white school getting education. They felt that their teachers were better. Yeah, a in, lot better. You know, in the. Because the other ones, like, they didn't really care, like. Yeah. I mean, they didn't think that the children in Roxbury would get an edge. But aside from the two senators, there was another man who was the subject of placards, Judge W. Arthur Garrity, Jr. The general consensus was that Garrity deserved to be hanged. A new touch was the abundance of tea bags, apparently to signify the demonstrate that the demonstrators were in the same vein as those who tipped the tea into the harbor. There were American flags, and of course, there were special t-shirts. He knew he was in hostile territory, but never before had a Kennedy been met with such a reception in Boston. He was booed. The crowd would not. They were worried. They were afraid that, you know, the buses wouldn't be on time, picking them up from school to get them home. There were instances where the buses didn't show up or they let the children off at wrong stops. And it's still going on today. Yeah, because they did try to hold peace. And that was their main objective, was to get the kids into the school because that was, you know, the law. But they did try to... Excuse me. You know, they did try to keep the peace. Not as bad. Not as bad, but there's always been tensions like a white person wouldn't liberally walk in Roxbury, and a black person would never liberally walk in South Boston I still or, work there, or like, Savin Hill at that time. Poor black guy, you know, like, and there was like a hundred white, but that one kid with the, yeah. um, 
Okay, yellow is like a lance. Right in them. Yep. yep. And uh, so, do you believe that the busing crisis created more harm than peace? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Time it did. Definitely. For a long yeah. Time it did. People want, want like walking on eggshells, you know. And I was going to school in like grade at the time. I was like 16, something like that, 15 years old. Uh, that's like 65. And you know. Uh, well, back then, you, that you chose what yeah. school you went to. I chose you weren't that. Yeah. Forced to go to but that school. two years later, I ended up in Salty High. You know, you back then you could pick your own school. In the end, the busing crisis was a scarring event for many people, which revealed the racist, angry underbelly of South Boston. But there must be some evidence of the busing because it is still continuing today.